Welcome, ghosts, back to Bullet Catcher Gaming. I'm joined by Sandy Lands once again for part two of the survey results. Thank you, everyone, who did fill out the survey. Um, I'm not going to go into the too much into detail about the survey scoring in terms of answers one to ten, all that kind of stuff. If you want a bit more detail, if you didn't do the survey and you want a bit more detail on that, check out video one. Half the results are on there. And the other half of the results are on here. We did it like this, A, to try and keep the videos a bit shorter because people don't always like really long videos. And we also did it just because of, sometimes it's just because if I didn't want to bombard people with like 50 odd answers on one screen. I just thought it was a bad idea. So um, apologies because a couple of people said they would have liked a longer video. So I'm sorry about that. So um, Sandy's here. Let's go through... Um, Let's go through these answers. There is going to be, um, I know A Squad's going to be covering all of these survey results uh, on a podcast as well. So keep your eye out for that. Um, and we'll be talking about them, I'm sure, more in the next few weeks. So we're going to do what we did on the first video. We're going to ask seven questions and then we're just going to show the rest of them in the background. And just very quickly, 11,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone that subscribed. It means the world to us. Honestly, thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. First question. How important is it to you that the studio sticks to the community-made charter that was made for them by the fans? I'm going to come straight in with that. Obviously, the average was 8 out of 10. But obviously, by far, as you can see here, the most answered question was question 10. Um, if people don't know what it is, uh, I have put it in videos before. You can easily find it if you Google search it. Um, it is basically a fan-made um, charter that was put together, and it is basically the rules of what people want. It was after, effectively, Breakpoint came out and broke a lot of the things that people really wanted, like RPG mechanics, not being in there, all that kind of stuff. So uh, what do you make of this, Sandy? Yeah, I think, I mean, that was originally put, uh, put together by AI Blue Fox and a couple of other guys on the old forums. And I think it really covers what the core basics of a Ghost Recon game should be. Yeah, 100%. And clearly, judging by the scores here, people want, you know, overall, people are absolutely asking. If you can at the top five answers here, or in the, yeah, some five to ten. So basically, in the top half, people were saying, yes, they want them to stick to this charter. There's a few saying no. Obviously, we don't know the reasons for that. Um, but overall, people want that charter stuck to. And to be honest, I do, 100%. So let's have a look at the next one we chose. How important uh, how important to you is the next game to be playable offline? Now, I chose this one because I've seen this comment nonstop ever since Breakpoint came out. People saying it should have been playable offline. As you can see, it says average of 8 out of 10, but masses of answers there on number 10. So loads of people want that to be the case i think it's really important to be playable offline just for obvious reasons to be honest i don't even think we even need to go into it it makes total sense lots of people don't have great internet especially in certain places in the world they just don't um so what do you reckon sandy yeah again i think i still see comments all the time for breakpoint even with new players now saying when are they going to make it playable offline and, you know, that's got to be a critical for the next game if they want people to really invest in it. And, you know, I don't see why you can't... Well, well you could on Wildlands, right? So why can't yeah. you, you know... And it didn't really affect the game and, and the live service style of that game. So, you know, I don't see why they can't do that. So this is an interesting one. How important to you is including Ghost Recon lore in the next game? Now... Even though the average was still 8, um, the 10 was much lower, um, but obviously the answers in the top half were still very high, which is why it got an average of 8. I think it's massively important as a Ghost Recon law. I'm not saying that a new game shouldn't come out with new characters in it, new locations, things like that, but I do think there should be... I don't, I don't think it would be a great idea to suddenly give us a brand new Ghost Recon game 
everyone's new and they never mentioned anything that happens before. To me, that would feel very disconnected. I can't see, can you imagine them doing modern, like we're about to get Modern Warfare 3, can you imagine them not mentioning any of the other characters? A slightly different case, but you get what I mean. What do you make of it? Yeah, again, I think the lore is really critical at a Ghost Recon game. You know, one of the things that's always been a problem is their kind of continuity between between game to game. They never really seem to stick to things, and there's there's occasions where it breaks canon, which I think just doesn't help when you try to build a game with twenty years of history. And no, absolutely, you are totally right there. So, next question: How important to you is it that there is a class system in the next game? Now, at the end of the last video, I did show one of the other questions about the class system, and that was be able to create your own class. Now, this is a different question. Um, obviously, should there be one? Now, this is interesting because most of these questions, a lot of people are going towards the ten mark because they are saying, "Yes, we want this." This is the complete opposite. This has the highest score, as you can see here. It's actually an average of five, which is very low. And the answer one was the highest answer. And the answer one means absolutely not. It should not be in the game. And you can see the chart here. And I have to say, I totally agree with them. I don't like a class system. I don't like locking weapons. I don't like locking skills to a specific class system. In a game that's supposed to be about special operators, they wouldn't do that. Yes, you might have medics, things like that, but they go way beyond that in these games, like locking very specific things to certain characters um, and certain classes, and I don't like it. Create a class, different story, because you can put what you want on that person. Having just classes that they decide upon with specific weapons or you know, stuff like that. No, thank you. I don't want it. And by the looks of it, judging by how the other answers have come out, no one else really wants it either. What What do you rate of that? Yeah, I just think Breakpoint was far too restrictive for what you would expect for a tier one operator. You know, it just, I think it hindered things more than helped. Well, you know, I used to like using the white hot thermal, which means you had to use Pathfinder all the time. You shouldn't. Yeah. That's nonsense. That's rubbish. That that was a really terrible idea. That should be available to everybody on all classes. Yes. Yeah. So next question. How important is it to you that weapons and ammunition and ammunition are scarce or restricted in the game world? Now, this would obviously, if they were scarce or restricted, make the game, you would argue, at least a lot harder. Now, this still has an average of six. There's a lot, there's still a lot of people, um, obviously, if you look at the chart, 10 looks high. But if you see the amount of people that actually voted for 10, it's very low. And obviously, 7 and answer 5, it's kind of all over the place. So I think there is a really mixed reaction to this one. Looking at the numbers, people are, it, it, it's a really even split across pretty much everything. And I must admit, this is a really tough question. Yes, I think it could benefit the game in some regard. But in another regard, I think if they get to decide how this works, it could become very frustrating for people. So personally, I'll say what I always say is give you the option to make them restricted. Don't necessarily start with them restricted. Have it as an option where, you know, you find ammo lying around in bases, you can turn that option off and they disappear. Then you are pleasing both crowds. You know, it, it's, that's that's the best for me. What do you think? Uh, first, I want to send out a bit of an apology on this one. Uh, the way I worded it was pretty bad, actually. And never really got to the root of what I was trying to ask. Um, the question what I should have really asked was when it comes to exotic weapons, you know, and exotic calibers, things like the MP7, the P90, stuff that's non standard ammo, um, or stuff specifically like the um, the Desert Eagle, stuff that isn't actually fronted by militaries, so you wouldn't you wouldn't have a regular supply of ammo in that country. Um, I think that would make it feel more realistic. I think, I mean, obviously things like AK-47 or anything with 5.56 should, shouldn't necessarily be restricted, but 
you know, unless it's a really unusual weapon. The L85 is a good example of that. It's only used by, I think, three militaries across the world. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not something you come by regularly. Well, we've mentioned this before. The one thing I don't want to see restricted is, you know, the ghosts are supposed to be American operators. The weapons should absolutely fit what American operators should use. So I don't want to see st standard weapons that you will see used by American spec ops teams then hidden away and become restricted or really scarce. They should be open, unlocked at the beginning, and other types of weapons from around the world should be the scarce and restricted weapons. That's what I hope they do, personally. I don't think that it should work the other way around, personally. But, you know, be interested to see what people say. Um, how important to you is it that weapon ballistics and bullet drop um, in the next game feel authentic? And this one was a runaway. Um, answer 10 ran away with this. And to be honest... It, so it should. I know there was a few people, 36 people, didn't, said no. I must admit, I'm no, no offence to those people, I'm baffled by that. Because the bullet drop in Breakpoint was awful. Um, some of the ballistics and things like that, issues with that. And I know there was a separate question on render distance as well, which to me is really important because the render distance on Breakpoint was also terrible. These things are really important because sometimes the the way that you fire the gun is it, it, it is so satisfying when it works. And breakpoints were all over the place. There's a few weapons that feel satisfying and some that just feel dreadful. It, it, it's, they don't even feel like you're supposed to be firing a weapon. It's like you're firing a BB gun or something. It's, it's not good. What did you make of that? I mean, if you go back to Wildlands, I remember seeing a video of somebody taking a a 3K sniper shot, and you know, they, you couldn't physically see them on the map, but you could still hit people at 3K, and then they tried it again in breakpoint, and although it would land, it had no effect, and it just, it just felt out of place, especially if, a if you're a sniper or you're into sniping, you know, being restricted to only be able to hit things at 550 metres is pretty disappointing, to be fair. Absolutely. So we got another one. How important is deep customization of your character's appearance, gear and weapons in the next game to you? Now, I can confirm that this was clearly, as you can see, it's an it says it's an average of nine, but it had the most amount of answer tens than any other question. So this gives you an absolute indication that I know there's some people it doesn't bother them and that's absolutely fine. But it does bother a lot of people. They want to be able to control what their character looks like and their appearance, what weapons they've got, what gear they can carry. And the more options that are available for that, the better. And to be fair, the more Ubisoft could actually monetize the game. They, the monetization should be pushed down. Just keep on supplying over and over and over more stuff for us to purchase and buy and to obviously we want to be able to open a load of it in game obviously um i'm certainly not you know shilling for ubisoft on them making money on on that but what i'm saying is is that if they were to do it you know over the course of years and years then yeah i'm sure people don't mind if they give us something great people don't mind paying for it um and I, I don't think that happened in breakpoint most of the stuff to purchase was really poor um, there was a couple of good bits, but overall it was not great. Um, what did you make of that? Yeah, again, I think this kind of ties into what you said earlier with the weapons that, you know, especially US kit. US kit you shouldn't have to unlock in game or you shouldn't have to buy. That should be there right from the start. You know, I mean, at, at the very least, um, Scorpion, OCP, uh, ACU, and maybe one of like um, M81 Woodland. They should be absolute mainstays of the game for an, for an American tier one operating unit. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there you go. That's our seven questions that we've decided to ask. Um, as like on the other video, I'm going to show the last 20 questions that we haven't covered, probably with a little bit of music starting kind of around now. Um, and just to kind of, you can pause them, go through them. Um, it's just so we, the, the video doesn't go on for ages and ages and ages. As I said, we will be covering this in other areas um, in the coming weeks as well, so keep an eye out for that. 
But um, thanks Andy for jumping on and thank you everyone who did fill out the survey. Also completely understand why certain people didn't want to do it, as I mentioned in video one. So thank you again, um, take care. Here's the rest of the results and uh, I'll see you again on the next one. Bye bye.